Would you look at how packed this vintage antique flea market is getting? It just keeps growing and growing and growing. In the middle of this big crowd, how are you going to find the best deals? Today I'm going to tell you the two best times to shop a vintage antique flea market to make the biggest score. We'll see antique furniture, collectibles, all the classics like Fenton, McCoy, Libby, carnival glass, signed pieces, basically absolutely everything that I can fit into one video and I will make sure that I show you as many price tags as I can find. We'll talk to one of my favorite vendors to get the inside scoop and we will see half off tables. If you're new to my channel, welcome or welcome back. I'm Tanya. This video is packed with great information so stick around until the end to find out the absolute best time of day to buy and why. Whether you are a beginner or an expert, there's something here for everyone. I saw this sign and beelined straight to this half off table. Wouldn't you? Half off everything in this booth. Quick heads up for this video, it was really windy and noisy out here, so you might want to turn on your subtitles because there's some really interesting conversations that are a little bit harder to hear. Also, for anyone wondering where I've been and what I've been up to, I will show you at the end. I really did pack a lot into the end of this video. You look at that too? Go, no, go for it. I, it was half off, you know that, right? Yeah. That's Actually, if you had, if you needed a bowl this big, that's a great price. I know, huh? Yeah, it is. It's a McCoy. You looked it's at the McCoy. bottom. I yeah, couldn't I get it when you were filming, but yeah, it's yeah. McCoy. Half off of that. That's great. Yeah, that is one big bowl, though, isn't it? That's the problem. It is. Where do you even big. store it? Exactly. Then? Thank you. That's exactly. Huge. I was thinking that. I'll just walk around and film you picking things up if you don't mind. No. <laughs> So this is 20 something like yeah. It's heavy though. Yeah. I had to pick up this egg because it reminded me of an antique flea market find that will blow your mind. Make a mental note because I'm going to tell you that story a little later in the video. Digging into the Fenton over here. We got lots of Fenton collectors watching. I know that. It is gorgeous glass. I mean, any piece, really. Just they're they're all gorgeous from start to finish. Oh my goodness, I'm having so much trouble figuring out which end is up, but I'm really determined to get this signature on camera for you. Hopefully you can see it. It's got 
My channel is full of treasure hunts with over 100 videos to watch and binge-worthy playlists for vintage and antique flea markets, yard sales, garage sales, and estate sales, Goodwill, and other thrift shops. So if you love looking for stuff as much as we love looking for stuff, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We would love to have you join our happy, growing little YouTube family. We're going to watch this young lady test for crystal. I said I would tell you the two best times to shop at a vintage antique flea market, and here is time number one. When they open, first thing in the morning, be there first. This is why, because tables like this are going to get cleared first, and the later you get there, the less you're going to have to choose from. But this also goes for every other table, because the rule of thumb is that all of the best stuff at all of the best prices are going to go fastest. So the later in the day that you get to an antique vintage flea market, the less you're going to have to choose from everywhere. Dealers from local antique shops swoop in here first thing in the morning, go on a buying frenzy, and then they're back to their shop in time to open. That means the rarest and most valuable antiques are flying off the shelves at around 6 a.m. So if you really want to see everything that your local vintage antique flea market has to offer in its purest form, you're going to have to run with the big dogs and be there before 6 with your running shoes on. You want to see some excitement? Get here when the professionals do. Yeah, anything you want to show me up close? What would I show you up close is really, oh, I know. This is a Norman Bel Geddes fan, skyscraper oh, wow. design. Oh, how fun. Extremely rare. Never seen one, can't find one. I've never seen one before in my life. And I've been around Deco stuff forever, and I've never seen this one. In original condition, it's just wonderful. Wow. People are scared to death of it because I tell them how much it is. Oh, well, how much is it? It's three fifty. Three fifty? Yeah, and it's probably worth, my guess is over a thousand. Wow. In the right marketplace. Huh. I used to have a lot of expensive Deco in Southern California, and this would have been up twelve hundred bucks in our store. Wow. Back when things were going better. <laughs> well, there's always really good deals here, so. You know what? That's the way it should be. Yeah. You know, I, I, I love that. Stuff, I price it when it should be, but I give much better deals. Yeah. That's great. There's always a deal here. You remember always that? Always a deal. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> That's why it's my favorite place. <laughs> I've been doing quite well here, so I'm very happy. Not as good as we did underneath the freeway, but. I can't remember his name. It's right here. It's Feral. Try that. Yeah. My mind isn't working well today or yesterday. Uh, <laughs> but it's these, awfully hot uh, out, so who these could are blame out. you? Yeah, this is um, the same one I found him online. This guy is an Animalia artist that does the bronzes. Okay. This stuff is beyond wonderful. It's very yeah. highly detailed. Found at a thrift store for practically nothing. Really? That's amazing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
amazing. He's lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. I guess it's probably best if you don't reveal your... Not on this one. Your lucky, uh, your lucky thrift stores to us. <laughs> I told you. I told you where I go. Uh, and you didn't believe me then. No, you, you told me, but you did not tell me what area. No. That's the thing. No. <laughs> I don't. I would tell you, but I don't want to tell your public. Oh, makes sense. <laughs> what is this one again? Libby. Signed Libby. Six piece. There's the info right there. That one I paid 200 for the set because I wanted it. Oh, wow. Gorgeous. At the height of the market, this set was, you might even be able to get the signatures right there. This little show. Maybe. I know that's something people ask all the time. Why aren't you showing the signature? But yeah, sometimes it just doesn't. Takes a, the yeah. sun is just so bright out here. Yeah. It's very. And the glasses are signed right there between the black mark. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, a little bit. I have the shake, so. A little bit. Me too. So this is going to be quite the video right here. <laughs> this is great. I do. The most wonderful part of all of this stuff is I love it. Yeah. And it's exciting when I find something that I personally like as well as the good stuff anyway. Uh, I'm going to have to search about 40, 50 bucks to find these pens. Like, it, it, the hunt like, is so exciting. I agree. It really is all about the hunt. These are it's um, almost more Japanese fun. Amari. Oh, beautiful. All of these were found in the same thrift store over a period of a year oh, wow. for no money. Oh, my goodness. With a bunch of other plates on top of them. And I saw wow. the edges, and that's how I knew they were there. I have about five more in the grouping that I bought. Goodness. And they just kept coming out slowly. Yeah, I don't know what. Because somebody know. donated them, right? And then they just put them out little by well, I little. Think just nobody else bought them. Yeah. Which made me happy. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> no. One of the few places left in, that I know that you can actually get people that are serious about buying the better stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. They they all want they all want a deal, but that's okay. We all want a deal. Yeah, we all want a deal. And as long as you keep it at a price that everybody can afford, then it sells. Right. The ones that don't sell are too greedy. Oh, okay. That's good to know, too. I still, every time I see all of your, um, all of your price tags on here, I am just so appreciative because. Oh, thank you. Okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> thank you so much. Because yeah, when people are watching it, they um, a lot of times they're, they're figuring out if they want to come out here too. So it's surprising how good of things. I hear a person, another dealer here, bought a piece that I cried when I saw it because it was such a good piece of liquid out here today. Really? For nothing. And we can't say anything about it because the dealer that he bought it from doesn't need to know that the owner is going to be sold or whatever. You know. Right, right. But it was for the <laughs> dollars he got the piece. It was probably worth the piece. Wow. I was so jealous. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Because I'm a Rupert fan. I would be too. You're... I used to specialize in American pottery. Oh, okay. The thing okay. that they need to do, people should do too, is not be envious of the dealers who work hard at this. Because yeah. that's what we do to make a living. Right. And we clean it out and get it where you're getting honest stuff, not crappy stuff. Right. Right, you don't have to do any of that work for yourself of this. deciding. This is a Hubach oh, piano baby. A piano baby. A real one. Most of what you see nowadays is from a, &A imports from the 70s and 80s. Oh, wow. That used to sell for a lot more money. But not lately. Well, it's like everything. It's because of the reproductions that killed the market because people can't tell the difference. Right, okay. 
I could though. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the great thing about coming here too. If you don't, if you don't know, you're you're coming to experts. I try so. to teach people about the stuff because I want more collectors and people to know what it is and understand why it's the price it is. Yeah. I'm gonna get you because. Oh, not too much. I want too much. I don't. <laughs> I'm infamous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but oh, I I try to um, I try to encourage people to go to the thrift shops and I do too. And tell them you can really find really great stuff there. I mean, you can't go looking for something specific. Well, a lot of but, thrift stores are now raising their prices dramatically. That's, of about that is true. <laughs> they don't know anything. Yeah. They're using the same tools that we use, the Google Lens and all that. Yeah. But they don't know the difference. Right. And they put too much on it, then they're going to reduce it eventually. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brand new. Oh, wow. Uh, from China. There's hundreds of these online. I bought this the other day thinking oh, really? it was real. Oh my goodness. And it fooled me completely. Oh wow. And you thought it was? Loetz, art, Austrian art glass. Wow. And I'm telling all the dealers that I see, be careful, because there were a couple of these online for $300, $400, because they didn't know. Yes. And you didn't even know until you had it in your hands. No, no until I took it home and looked it up. Well, you heard our vendor friend telling us a story about a huge score that just happened out here this morning. I'm going to respect his request and leave out the details, but I can tell you it was hefty. And it happens all the time, more than you might think. Whether that's at a thrift store, a yard sale, a garage sale, a barn clear out, an attic clear out, or a flea market just like this one. I'll give you one of the best examples I can think of. Remember the egg from earlier? I told you it reminded me of a story. I'm gonna tell you that story right now while we look at some more vintage and antiques. Not too long ago in the Midwest, a man made a purchase without knowing it was one of history's rarest and most sought after treasures. I mean, this is the dream, right? Can't you just picture it? Imagine casually browsing a flea market just like this one and your eyes land on a shiny egg. It's unique, it's intricate. The price is steep for a flea market find, $14,000, but something tells you this is special. So after you mortgage your house or sell your car or whatever you need to do to come up with $14,000, you take the leap. Now. Most people might question dropping that kind of cash on a hunch, but here's where the story takes a wild turn. This wasn't just any egg, this was a Fabergé egg. For those who don't know, Fabergé eggs were created by a Russian jeweler named Peter Karl Fabergé for the Russian royal family in, I believe it was the 18th century. These eggs are some of the most exquisite pieces of art ever made, crafted from gold and precious gems, and they often contained miniature surprises. Turns out the seemingly pricey flea market trinket was an incredibly rare Fabergé egg worth, are you ready? A staggering $33 million. Uh, 14 grand is a lot of money, but still that is quite the profit margin. I definitely say it was well worth his initial investment. This is a completely true story, and what's more, there's still seven or eight missing eggs. So they're out there somewhere. Uh, I think five are thought to have been destroyed, probably melted down, but who knows where the other ones are? Could you be the next lucky person to find one? Or maybe another treasure that's been lost to history? While the majority of us are not likely to come across the equivalent of a Fabergé egg, we can all certainly share in the excitement of finding a great deal on a vintage or antique piece. I haven't even left this row yet, so. 
lot of stuff here today. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> this is really a great idea to hang it in the... Thank you. I love you on that. I love this display idea. Hanging this in this trunk is great. Gorgeous chandelier. Buses and um, it was actually one of the workers' buses, and so yes, it leads the and goes into what's called the very bridge, and then there's the city. like an Achimawi, they do the same on both sides, and it's smooth on the inside, and they, they don't have any, oh, this is done very well. So almost the right color green. If it had been a little more green than uh, sea foamy, no. it probably would have went over. We like the, the dark green matte finish. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I just She should buy this basket. It's a beautiful basket. I used to. Uh, not this nice because I was young and couldn't afford nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 47. So. Oh, you're pretty young. <laughs> you still got a lot of stuff. I should to say do. back in my You're a doll. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Take a picture of this while you're doing it. Huh? Okay. I got one in there. Let's get this in the picture. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, oh there it went. And then, and then, uh, it was such a good shot. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. Give you a big kiss. We're good friends. That's my wife's over here giggling. <laughs> On the cheek. <laughs> there we go. 
<laughs> I'll try, but it won't. Happen. I started out my channel doing different things than I ended up doing for sure. So. She has no. Oh, okay. Holly Wolf, she's been on there for years, and she makes a freaking ton of money. Ah. Yeah, she does her gardening in her fancy underwear. Oh, see, that's what I was afraid of. And she's financing her life. Nice. And I'm telling you, I don't know, after you get a million hits on can't say the conversations out here are always quality, but uh, I guess I learned something. The Vintage Antique Flea Market or Antique Fair is one of the best places in the world to familiarize yourself with things that are out of the ordinary. Things that you might otherwise walk on by that you just didn't even realize were worth money. We're going to take a look at some of those items. You may come across these at yard sales or garage sales and somebody's backyard clean out that they're doing. Or maybe you have items like this hanging out in your own junk pile. There are hidden treasures hiding behind every corner and the more you know, the bigger chance you have at finding them. $58 for parts? Who knew? From time to time, I get comments in my comment section asking me why I show the junk. Well, it's because one man's junk is another man's treasure. And if you are a flipper and you can't identify that the things in this, what some people might call a junk pile, are worth money, you're leaving money on the table. Also, if you're a flipper, especially if you flip online, you might want to consider grabbing a table at a place like this. You can do it every now and again. You don't have to do it every month. It's a great opportunity to turn over inventory that's just not selling online, or perhaps you have a few pieces that are just too heavy to ship. Something like this can be a great opportunity because you also have the opportunity to get to know other vendors and trade with them.
and that's another great way to update your inventory. The best advice I can give when coming out to a place like this is to have some sort of a plan. You can stay open-minded, but it's not like going into a thrift store where you might find a handful of things that you like. If you're like me, you're gonna go in wanting everything. And I learned the hard way that before I leave home, I wanna see how many vases I have room for. Um, if I have a wall where I want a piece of art or a mirror, what size realistically can I hang there? Can I find the studs or do I have lath and plaster? <laughs> because that $35 high boy that seems like a really great deal at the time uh, may cost you, I don't know, around $100 to rent a truck and move it home. And then if you don't have the spare room for it, it could end up costing you $200 a month in a storage. And that's a case of what I call my eyes being bigger than my square footage. It happens to me all the time and I've had to learn to dial it back. But some deals really are just too good to pass up. And besides, you know what they say, antique dealers are just collectors who ran out of room. Well, geez, that took a wrong turn somewhere. Uh, I managed to talk myself out of my own advice. Okay, just don't listen to me, I'm a bad influence.
As the market winds down, we come to time number two, best time of day to get the best deals and why. It's second on my list, but in reality, it's the number one time to get the greatest deals and steals. Deals are good, but steals are better, and this is the best time of day to get them. It's somewhat slim pickings around this time. You don't have the same variety as you do early in the morning, but you do have something on your side that could be worth even more. The vendors are packing up around this time. They start packing up before it's time to actually close. And the last thing they want to do is take everything home with them. They start setting up around 3.30 or 4 in the morning. So by this time, they are absolutely exhausted. So obviously you're gonna get the best deals right away on anything large or heavy, like furniture. Also, if you want to buy many items from one place, this is the best time to do it. Glassware, sets, figurines, things like that, uh, small things are gonna take a lot of time to pack as well. So also a great deal on those. I can guarantee you're gonna get a screaming deal and if you stop to look at something, most likely you're going to have a vendor hollering after you, lowering the price with each step you take away. If you're using this strategy to shop, I highly recommend that you show up two, maybe three hours before close. The reason is mostly, you know, for your heart. Because if you wander around and see things that you really like and really want and wait till the end of the day and they're gone, it will just absolutely destroy you. So don't come until you're ready to buy at the very end and they start packing up early. So you want to get there in enough time that you can still buy things before everything's off their tables. I'm going to show you a few examples of dropping prices so you can see what I mean. I went from, I went from 225 to 150 to 100. Yeah, 100 is a screaming deal. Yeah, it is. It's a solid bed. There's nothing on it that's broken or busted up. It's quite a nice bed. It's gorgeous. But he moved out. He got his own house, and so we don't need the bed anymore. Oh. Fantastic. You like the mirror? It's pretty. How much is it? Late in the day, maybe we could come down more. I don't know. All right. She's She's got 75 on it. 75 on it? Yeah, what do you think? It's very pretty. What do you think? Those are the magic words. That's the equivalent of saying, what are you willing to pay right now? This is when you still try not to be insulting, but you name your price. Hi. <laughs> Hang out if you want to see what I got. That's up next. This was the parking lot at the beginning of the day. It was so packed here. This is the side entrance about midday. And this is the ghost town at the end of the day. The only cars here are the people who just are ready to stop shopping no matter what time it is and the vendor cars. I have no idea who this van belongs to but I love it and I had to share it. It's just absolutely amazing. It belongs to one of the vendors for sure. Hello YouTube family, I'm going to show you my haul, but I am hot and sweaty from the day. It was windy out there, but it was a hot wind. So I am not going to show my face right now. Terribly sorry, but here's my haul. It's not a huge haul, but it sure does take up a lot of space. <laughs> I'll show you everything close up. We'll get back to my haul in a second, but first I wanted to show you what I've been working on. I have missed you all so much. Thank you for all of your warm wishes and your concern. I adore you all. And I'm just so, so, so glad to be back. And I just wanted to show you what I've been working on while I was away. I wrote a couple of books. They're both based on and reinforce the requirements for Common Core. 
So they are for educators, any teachers or homeschoolers. I had so much fun doing this. I'm so glad that I did. And at some point, I'm sure I'll do more of them. I put the link to both of the books in the description box below this video, just in case any of you are educators or just want to check it out. If you do happen to buy the book, please, please, pretty please leave a review and we'll be new best friends. Thank you so, so much in advance. But mostly, I just want to say thank you so much for waiting for me. I am so glad that you're here. Okay, enough mushiness. Back to my haul for a close-up. First up, a set of Tiffin Franciscan etched gold encrusted wine glasses. They are stunning. Full set, I mean, goblets, champagne, the whole thing, the whole thing. Look at those gorgeous roses and that stunning etching. Oh my goodness. They're just my favorite in the world. Oh wow. They have them without the etching, but who would want that when you could have both? I'm only showing four of each. There's actually six of each, but I was terrified of knocking them all over like dominoes. I feel like this is enough to get the point across. Obviously, I didn't have time to, clear any, to clean anything off yet, but these are silver-plated candlesticks. I had to get them just because what would a fancy dinner be without candlesticks? Of course, we're throwing in a little pink depression glass because golden pink together on a table by candlelight. Am I right? Thank you so much for coming with me and hanging out. I had a blast as usual. I have a great video coming up next week. I spent a whole lot of time on it. It's one of my all time favorites, I'd say. So I'll see you next week. Um, I hope you like the video, and if you don't, don't tell me. Just kidding. Tell me. Tell me. I always appreciate your input. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. Happy thrifting.